Да. Но. So this is Andreas uh, last uh, lecture. Uh, Andreas uh, handled a very difficult subject. That is, for me, it's a very, very complex one. Uh, I mean, uh, one could see him striving to uh, make things uh, very natural. You know, his choices. You know, he could have just written equations one after another. But I think it is in a discovery mode. Uh, Making every step uh, well, uh, very natural. Say, if you want the equations, there is yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I think this is a uh, uh, those of you who aspire to be teachers, uh, I think this is a, there is a little bit lesson to learn. You know, to uh, make the audience uh, feel like discovering along with you. So, Andreas, thank you very much for this. Uh, very nice. Good morning. We shall uh, uh, start off from the last time. And uh, well, this is the last uh, lecture, I believe, of the uh, school. So thank you, people who have stayed back till the end. <laughs> OK, there's also a tutorial after this. And uh, uh, given some comments, I think I will actually give a problem and try to discuss a solution. Okay. I mean, I'll try to prove the non-commutative union boundary. It's just plain, very simple geometry. Okay. So let's recall uh, what we saw so far. So uh, we were motivated by uh, some uh, uh, protocols coming from classical network information theory. Okay. And uh, as motivating examples, we took two channels, classical channels, broadcast channel where there is a single sender, two receivers. Sender wants to send a pair of messages, M1, M2. M1 is intended for receiver 1, M2 is intended for receiver 2. That was uh, our first uh, motivating example. The second one was the interference channel, where there is sender 1, receiver 1 pair, sender 2, receiver 2 pair. 
Sender 1 wants to send M1 to receiver 1, sender 2 wants to send M2 to receiver 2, but uh, the channel uh, uh, corrupts things in the middle and confuses between the sender receiver pairs and so on, and uh, we want to code uh, as best as we can. Okay. So we saw uh, some classical uh, techniques to prove inner bounds for these channels. So uh, for the broadcast channel, we looked at Martin's uh, inner bound technique. Uh, which uh, in its souped up form uh, is the best known inner bound so far and we were looking at a reduced form Martin but already there uh, when we uh, try to look at uh, uh, the question of whether we can uh, transport Martin's classical inner bound proof into the quantum setting we were faced with pitfall number one that pitfall was uh, uh, it seemed like we had to take span of uh, subspaces and that was the problem so so classically, we took union of events. Quantumly, maybe we want to take span of subspaces, and that was a problem. So that was pitfall one. For the interference channel, we looked at uh, even more toy version of the interference channel, uh, an inner bound protocol, okay, consisting of uh, two multiple access channels. So multiple access channels when there are two senders, one receiver. Uh, uh, sender 1 sends, uh, wants to send message M1, sender 2 wants to send message M2, and receiver has to be able to decode both M1 and M2. So we looked at even a uh, toy version of the interference channel where uh, both the receivers want to get both the messages, and we saw that uh, there was a problem. We looked at the classical technique, and uh, the classical technique uh, seem to do so-called simultaneous decoding and we tried to, uh, so we went back to the multiple access channel and tried to look at the classical protocol for doing simultaneous decoding and there the classical protocol was uh, doing intersection of events, intersection of sets, so quantumly intersection of spaces and then there is a problem. So that was pitfall number two. So uh, faced with these two pitfalls, uh, uh, we said that okay, we can overcome it, provided we have a lemma of this form. So this is the quantum multi-hypothesis testing lemma. Okay, so recall that we have a set of rows, call them positive instances if you want. Set of sigmas, call them negative instances. Between every pair, rho i and sigma j, there's a distinguishing uh, test, pi i j, p o v m element, which is something matrix between zero and one. So the test does uh, very well on uh, uh, rho. Okay. 1 minus epsilon and it does something on sigma okay I mean the intuition is it does very badly on sigma it accepts sigma with very low probability but I mean we don't even have to quantify that so uh, note that between every pair of rho and sigma we have a distinguishing test in this sense okay and now what the lemma tells us is that I can find one test pi tilde so pi ij presumably is tailor made to rho i and sigma j okay there's no guarantee what pi ij does on any other rho or any other sigma <laughs> Okay. But nevertheless, we can find one test pi tilde, okay, which does well on all the rows. Well means uh, something like this. So the epsilon takes a beating, and the beating depends upon the number of uh, uh, negative instances. Okay. But uh, note that there are no dimension factors coming in out here, which is important. And uh, so, so this is the performance on pi tilde on rho is uh, quite good. Okay. And the performance on pi tilde on, on sigma is also, I mean, not so bad. I mean, it's, it's still pretty good, I would say. Okay. And this is the quantity we get. So in general, I mean, things, a couple of things which are not so nice. Uh, and I mean, uh, I mean, uh, to, to see this like first, to even believe me for a few seconds, you have to uh, look at the classical version of it. So we saw that last time. So classically, uh, uh, so classically, what, what would one get? So maybe it's, uh, recall, it's easier to think initially that there is only one positive instance. So there's only one row and there are many sigmas. So then we can improve the uh, performance on the sigmas to twice the optimal performance, with a factor of two of the optimal performance. So classically, uh, 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 recall how pi tilde was constructed. Suppose k is equal to one, only one row. So it was the intersection of uh, these uh, events, the intersection of these tests. Okay, and the intersection classically will not give a factor of two. It will be just less than or equal to this. And here the epsilon would take a beating, it would become 1 minus L epsilon. So that's the classical performance. Okay? And now if you have many positive instances, the, uh, so uh, I, I have uh, a so-called pi tilde 1 distinguishing rho 1 from all the sigmas, pi tilde 2 distinguishing rho 2 from all the sigmas. 
Okay, classically I'm talking. So the final pi tilde will be the union of these pi tilde one, pi tilde two, and so on. So on the positive instances, it will still behave uh, like one minus l epsilon classically, and on the negative instances, it would be uh, just the summation uh, of uh, uh, su uh, summation of these probabilities of the individual uh, tests. Okay, but uh, the news is not so good quantumly. So so, uh, but it's still, I mean, uh, it's still pretty good, I would say, because we still have the summation. The problem is we have uh, some killer fact, uh, it's not a bad killer, whatever. We have an irritant of 1 over alpha here, which comes out here also. Okay, so there's some kind of a trade-off going on. We have overall square root. Okay, so, uh, so that's the difference. But, um, and uh, if k is equal to 1, I mean, things are much nicer. We don't need the alpha and we don't have the overall square root, we just have this. So that's uh, the news from the quantum hypothesis testing lemma. So, so any uh, questions about what you've done so far? So today I'm going to prove the lemma. No questions? Okay. So let's uh, start. <coughs> so I told you how classically one would prove the lemma. And um, let's see. So. Let's start with k equal to one case, okay? So okay, that's uh, and then for the general k case, we will uh, build up from the k equal to one solution. Okay, that's th that's in fact finally w just one step away. So really, I mean, most of the work is in the k equal to one case. Okay, so there's uh, one row and there are many sigmas. <coughs> so classically, what was the idea? Take the intersection of these sets. Okay, we have. Uh, tests pi 1j, so, so classical. Okay, so okay. Uh, quantumly, we have subspaces. So, what do we do? I mean, intersection will usually be the zero uh, subspace. So we cannot quite do that. <coughs> so uh, we saw one of the attempts uh, uh, which doesn't work when we saw it in the co context of the multiple access channel. So another idea would be maybe uh, take some kind of product of the pi ij's. Okay, I mean, uh, again, I mean, in the classical setting, like, uh, everything is diagonal in the computational basis, so taking the intersection is like taking intersection is like uh, taking product of the projectors because they are all simultaneously diagonal. So one can uh, say, okay, if they are not simultaneously diagonal, I can still take the product, and if you want to make it to a positive operator, whatever, you, you take the product and then you multiply by its uh, adjoint or something like that. So you, uh, but then uh, we saw already a, uh, for the thing of the multiple access channel that there was a problem. If you took the product of all the projectors, there was a commuting problem there. So that's also not uh, quite good. So naive quantum idea. Pi tilde is equal to. pi 1 2, pi 1 L, and maybe pi 1 L dagger, then whatever, pi 1 L, my, whatever, Let me consistent pi 1 2 dagger, whatever. Well, the, the dagger is the same, so maybe I'll just pi 1, something like this. Okay? So the this at least is a, a positive map, but I mean, that still doesn't quite work because, uh, I mean, if I take that pi uh, tilde and if I try to play this pi tilde, suppose I want to compute trace of pi tilde uh, rho, uh, sorry, sigma 2, okay, according to this definition. So you can see, like, I would put a sigma 2 here. If it was sigma 1, pi 1, 1 would do a good job. I mean, the rest of it. I mean, all have norm less than or equal to 1, so I don't care. But this pi 1, 2 is there, and I wish I had switched the definition, but you see the problem. I mean, switch these operators. So that's a non-commuting problem, so that's going to kill us. Like, like, non-commuting problem. Okay, 
So naive ID also doesn't work. <coughs> okay. So what can uh, we do? Here is an idea which will work for the sigmas, but we will see what happens with uh, the row out there. Okay. So, so new idea. Define pi, I'll define a projector pi tilde hat, and uh, so uh, henceforth my notation is if pi is a projector, pi hat is the pro, uh, projector onto the orthogonal subspace. So it's identity minus pi if you want. Okay. So define. So uh, I will not define pi tilde immediately. I'll define pi tilde hat. So pi tilde hat is the projector. Span of okay. So uh, oh, uh, okay. So before we come to that, okay. Yeah. So before the new idea, I like to make a small remark. Without loss of generality. Uh, so we have POVM elements pi one one two pi 1 L, right? Okay? So then the setup of the lemma. So the, the uh, pure beam elements mean they're just matrices between 0 and 1. I mean, positive semi-definite matrices less than or equal to identity. But saying, uh, but I can say without loss of generality, these are projectors. Okay? Now I'm going to make that. So henceforth, I will treat them as projectors. And uh, why can I do that? I can double uh, the dimensional Hilbert space. So I have I mean, there, there's an underlying Hilbert space H. I will attach another orthogonal copy of H, and I will use Gelfand Naimark theorem. So I'll make the uh, POVM elements into genuine orthogonal projectors. So I, I'll do that right at the beginning. Okay. So, so without loss of generality, uh, pi one one, pi one two, etc., are uh, orthogonal projectors. Okay. So uh, is this clear? So henceforth, they're projectors. And then I will try new idea. New idea is I will uh, consider the projector onto the uh, span of, uh, well, to be very precise, I should say span of supports of, okay. so that's what I mean precisely. So, so uh, pi 1 1 is a projector onto some subspace. Uh, pi 1 1 hat is a projector on by, by definition onto the orthogonal uh, uh, subspace okay so so look at the supports of pi 1 1 hat pi 1 2 hat pi 1 l hat these are some spaces take their span and uh, i can consider the projector of uh, onto the uh, span of the supports of these things call that pi tilde hat so in other words i have defined pi tilde out here okay so pi tilde is defined to be identity minus pi tilde hat Okay, Shivashish. Huh. They're used for distinguishing between uh, rho and uh, each of the sigmas. Yeah. Hmm. Correct, correct. Well, um, so in the Gelfand Naimark, okay, so I append an extra Hilbert space, but uh, the row and the sigma still live in the original Hilbert space, okay? But uh, the new uh, pi's, they live in the direct sum h, direct sum h. So that's that's the embedding that I'm taking, okay? So I'll uh, call h direct sum h as my new h, okay? And it's true that uh, the rho and sigma live in the first half of this new edge, but henceforth I'll not care. I mean, they are, uh, they are states in my uh, new edge, and uh, pi's are genuine projectors in my new edge. Okay, so this whole uh, proof will be very geometric, just plain linear algebra, and uh, we'll just play with subspaces, angles, and that's it. No entropies, nothing. Okay, no matrix analysis, nothing. So. 
Okay, so uh, so once uh, yeah, so uh, but I mean uh, uh, making them projectors is important because I'll play with vector spaces. Okay, so uh, so now, now that they're projectors, I've defined uh, pi tilde hat like this, and that means I've defined pi tilde. Any questions? How it is defined? Okay. So so let us see. I mean, this pi tilde is indeed very very good. So, <clears throat> yeah, so. Okay, so what what does support of pi tilde look like? So support of pi tilde, okay, is uh, orthogonal to the supports of all these guys because of construction. So uh, so uh, vector in the support of pi uh, support of pi tilde is orthogonal to support of pi tilde hat. Support of pi tilde hat is the span of these spaces. So in other words, a vector uh, in support of pi tilde is orthogonal to all these uh, supports. Okay, so. So, uh, in particular, a vector in pi tilde is orthogonal to uh, support of pi 1 1 hat, okay, which by very definition means it lies in pi 1 1. Okay. So, uh, I can repeat the argument. So, essentially, support of pi tilde is a subspace of support of pi 1 1, subspace of support of pi 1 2. So, Okay, I mean, uh, before you start shouting at me, I mean, I'm I'm sneaking in the intersection again. Okay, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. So, I, of course, uh, support of pi tilde is contained in the inter intersection. So, t I mean, you again start shouting. Of course, it uh, it will usually be zero, but wait. Okay, but this is the this is believe it or not, this will be. Well, I mean, we'll do something sh short left, but this is the way to go. So, new idea, which is not really different from the naive quantum idea. So, this is. Contain the intersection of all these things, which uh, which will really work. I mean, so trace of I mean usually it will be the zero projector, so of course it will work. So trace of pi tilde uh, sigma j, okay, because this uh, uh, support of pi tilde is contain the support of pi i j pi one j, so this will be less than trace of pi one j sigma j. Great. I don't even need factor of two. Okay. So, but of course, what bites me? What bites me is I cannot prove anything out here. Okay. So, trace of pi tilde rho is greater than what? I have no idea. Okay. So, so that what bites you? I mean, usually pi tilde will be zero, so this will also be zero. <laughs> so, what am I talking about? Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So, uh, so before we just uh, discard this idea, new idea is the same as naive uh, idea. What am I saying? So let's pause a moment. Okay. So, why does the new idea fail usually? Okay. So, I mean, I mean, usually you will expect that pi tilde is uh, the zero projector. Why is it really happening? Okay. I mean, why is the uh, usual uh, bad case happening? It's happening because the span of the supports of these guys will span the entire Hilbert space. Okay. Now suppose I can uh, make an argument which says that they don't span the entire Hilbert space. Okay. So I'll have to do something. So here is where the uh, I mean real uh, fun starts. So suppose I can uh, do some tweaking so that they don't span the entire Hilbert. So at least I know this is not the zero projector. But still, I mean, okay, this calculation goes through. Okay. But I mean, what can I say about this? This is the problem. Okay. But hang on. Okay. So, so classically, what was happening? I mean, I mean, classically, the intersection worked. Okay. So that means classically, even this idea is nothing. Still, the intersection. Wh why is it classically working? So, so let's try to see what this might be. So. This is, of course, an equality.
okay okay so so uh, classically i mean classically uh, i would get 1 minus l epsilon as we argued so let us see why i one gets 1 minus l epsilon that's because okay we do this first step also holds in quantum then uh, so rem uh, remember what is uh, pi tilde hat i mean it's a projector onto some uh, space what is that space it is the span of some other spaces so classical this it was a union of some other spaces and this is the union bound classically okay so i have this and uh, and each of these things so this is greater than 1 minus l epsilon okay so uh, so so why is that i know that trace of pi hat 1 j sigma j sorry uh, 1 j rho is less than epsilon okay so for all j equal to 1 to n so this i know i mean this comes from the setup of the lemma okay so uh pi 1j does very well on rho that means pi hat 1j does very bad on rho so that that's all that i'm saying anyway. so this thing of course also holds to quantumly the only thing that uh, goes for a toss is this one and this is the span versus the union problem okay so so if only i mean we could do something about this then we'd be done right okay so here is what we'll do we'll do something about it so by even though we started off with the intersection problem we finally reduced it to the union problem so really it's the union problem which is the bottleneck i mean union of the span problem so uh, how do you handle it okay so recall uh, the geometric uh, counter example i mean why span does not behave like the union and that's because the picture look like this suppose this is my rho the quantum state and this is pi 1 projected onto this vector this what pi 1 1 by 1 2 what i'm saying maybe i will just drop the initial one out here but okay anyway so these are the two things and uh, sorry hat okay so uh, i know that trace of uh, pi 1 on hat rho is uh, less than equal to epsilon in, in this case it's zero okay and uh, trace of pi 1 uh, to hat rho is okay non zero it's less than epsilon let us say so classically uh, if i took the union 0 plus epsilon less than epsilon whatever in general whatever epsilon plus epsilon 2 epsilon something like that i will be able to see quantumly what happens is that maybe these two uh, like span this board and rho lies in the board so that becomes one so that was the problem okay so you think about little more carefully the uh, uh, classically like oh, when i had sets they were diagonal on the same basis okay so uh, sets have uh, elements in common that's the uh, intersection and the and the rest of it is symmetric difference so the rest of it is disjoint so you think of them as spaces and vectors between them and uh, like uh, like uh, so you have two subspaces and you have vectors and you have several angles between spaces so what is happening is classically the angles are either zero that is the intersection something like in the intersection or the angles are 90 degrees so that's the symmetric difference things are disjoint Okay, so zero and ninety degrees uh, is something that we can handle. I mean, if these were orthogonal vectors, uh, then I mean the classical thing would go through. Okay, and uh, yeah, and uh, if the angle was zero also, I mean uh, then again uh, like uh, you will see that it will be a, like at most two epsilon. Okay, so geometrically, uh, angle uh, uh, like if these two guys had angle zero in between them, I mean. pi hat 1 to n pi hat 1 if they had angle 0 i would have been happy if they had angle 90 degrees also i would have been happy okay so so the problem is arising okay so you can see okay what about intermediate angles so angles close to 90 degrees are also not so bad i mean you can do some geometric calculation or something at least for this case so the real uh, killer is the angles as uh, uh, close to zero so small non zero angles between are the problem okay so we have even identified what the geometric problem is okay so well in general i mean we have no control over what the angles are between uh these uh, spaces so what we'll do okay so what we'll do is 
we will further enlarge the Hilbert space. So this is the solution. Okay. So small angles are the problem. So we have to remove the small angles. So what we will do is, we will further enlarge the Hilbert space. So we'll, uh, like we have this H, which was the new H, of course. So this is, I'm still calling. So I have this H. Then uh, I will add like some more copies of H. How many copies of H will I add? As many as there are uh, sigmas, L of them. So now I will talk of uh, H uh, prime as this is the original H, direct sum what is H1 okay. so these are all uh, new spaces okay orthogonal to each other and also to H okay so uh, I'll add as many copies of H as the number of negative as L out here the original H is still hanging there okay so I'll now work in this new Hilbert space H prime okay so that's the first thing uh, and now uh, okay, so these are two spaces that they have small angles. So I'll tilt them slightly to increase the angle. I have to define formally what I mean by tilting. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, the point is the original Hilbert space might not be big enough to tilt them and increase the angles of all of them. Okay, that's why we have to attach uh, new space. I mean, we have to add new dimensions. So what I'll do is I will tilt uh, uh, this uh, pi hat one one slightly but I'll tilt it in the direction of H1 pi hat 1 to I'll tilt slightly but in the direction of H2 so they're all tilted okay uh, and the tilting directions are orthogonal so there's a lot of room suddenly so they're all tilted in orthogonal directions okay and this we, uh, we will see will work okay so I have to tell you what I mean by uh, tilting. Okay. So I'll define Tj so we call j equal to 1 to L. So formally I'll define map Tj taking you from the original Hilbert space to the jth copy just isometric embedding let's see if I fixed a computational basis for H corresponding com computational basis or just whatever one one of this H goes to one of this uh, like that just fix your isometry okay isometry okay and now So I'll, uh, uh, okay, so now fix okay well sorry fix uh, okay fix a real number between minus one and plus one and uh, I'll now define t j comma delta fixed delta okay so this will be a map which will go from h to i mean it will lie in the space h direct some h here okay and uh, i'll just tell you what's the action on a basis vector so given uh, a basis vector uh, a it will go to 1 minus uh, delta square a plus uh, delta so what is this notation so uh, I mean remember HJ is an isometric copy of H so uh, if I index the computational basis of H by A I mean A is equal to 1 2 3 so on then what if I have a similar computational basis out here this in bracket J just reminds me that this is the computational basis in HJ that's all so A of course goes from 1 to dimension of H. So this is the map on the computational basis. So you can see the tilt coming in there. I am tilting A slightly into the jth orthogonal space. Okay, the slight is how much is given by the amount delta. Okay. And uh, this is also an isometric embedding. So 
is also an isometry. Okay. And uh, geometrically what it looks like, suppose this was h, this is hj orthogonal to it, I am just tilting it slightly. Okay. And uh, in general of course given any vector uh, v belongs to h, like um, so T j delta uh, acting on V will be this expression like this and whatever I mean just coming from linearity out here. Yeah? Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. So I mean, the, the, I initially set it up that way, like t taking, orth uh, I mean, uh, copies of H, okay, and orthogonal. What I mean, okay, now you fix your favorite computational basis just to make things secure, and whatever, fix some basis and set up the correspondence. That's the A here and the A here. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is that uh, tilting map. Okay, tilting by delta. Any questions on the definition? Okay, so let us see what uh, we can do. So why is tilting, I mean, any good? Let us say I look at a, uh, I look at uh, the tilt of a vector v along the jth direction. I take uh, T j prime delta, some other vector may be w. Okay, and I want to say that the angle between them now can ne never be too close. And you, and you can see, I mean, w w uh, so. So if I look at that angle, whatever, inner product between them is at most 1 minus delta square. This you can check. Okay. In fact, uh, the, uh, the closest the two vectors can uh, come to each other is, is in fact when w is equal to v. Okay. And uh, but now they are tilted in different directions, j and j prime. So I mean, the inner product contribution only come from this part. The, the, the this is the the, the j, this is the jth part here lies in h j. Uh, for the other guy, it will lie in j prime, h j prime, and they are they are orthogonal. So the only the overlap will come from here. So now I know that the angles, the none of the angles can be very small. Okay. So so the uh, inner product is at most one minus delta square, bounded away from. So it has addressed that concern, but we'll, I mean, now we have to uh, let's prove a real uh, theorem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that uh, to maximize that, in fact, now v is equal to w. So that's the closest they can come. Uh, yeah, in general, it's even worse. But actually, I mean, if you uh, like, if you uh, Know what principal angles, I mean, you can see what the principal angles are. So these are pairs of spaces with constant angle between them. So all the principal angles will be, I mean, will have uh, uh, 1 minus delta square. Okay. And you can do that by setting up, whatever, take an orthonormal basis for H and, do, uh, and uh, see, uh, I mean, map them by Tj delta and Tj prime delta, and that, that will give you this uh, decomposition for those two spaces. Okay, so there's a, I mean, it's a, it's a very uh, structured way of tilting. Okay, the structure is important, so we'll see why. So here is the proposition. 
Okay. Take a vector h in the original Hilbert space, and uh, okay, um, yeah, and let us say, like I have subspaces w1 to wl in the original Hilbert space. So think of w1 to wl being the supports of pi hat 1 1, pi hat 1 2, pi hat 1 n. So that's precisely how I'm going to use it. Okay, I mean at least for a start. So I have certain uh, certain subspaces of H, okay. Okay, the, the, they line the original Hilbert space, L of them. This is the same L that I'm considering. Like I'm taking L different tilting maps, okay. So uh, I have some L spaces here, and and suppose further, like we are given that suppose, like if I project onto if I project h onto wj, this is quite small. This is less than square root epsilon, L2 norm. Okay. So, so remember that was my setup. Like the, I mean, think of this h as something in the eigenvector, uh, I, uh, as an eigenvector of rho, and um, I mean rho, the, uh, the single rho up there. And we know that trace of uh, pi hat uh, uh, 1, 1 rho was small, less than or equal to epsilon. That's basically captured exactly this way. Okay. So, so this is true for all j, j equal to 1 to n. Suppose this happens. Now, I will define something called w plus uh, alpha. Okay, so this is defined to be span of span j going from 1 to l of or W plus delta, okay, same delta here. So fix delta one minus. Okay, so define uh, this w, uh, this W plus delta to be the span uh, of, uh, j ranging from one to L of T j delta of W j. Okay, so the Ws are subspace of the original Hilbert space. Okay. I tilt these subspaces in uh, L different directions by my tilting map. Delta is the tilting parameter, how much I tilt. Okay, I take the span of these things and call that W plus delta. Okay? The, span, the plus here denotes there is a span of something and delta tells you what the tilt is. Okay, that's, I mean, that's, I mean uh, how to remember the notation. And now, what do you expect? Now, uh, like, uh, I mean, this is the span versus the union problem, but now things are tilted, angles are not so small. So now I expect something good to come out of it. So now uh, you can prove that the projection onto pi w plus delta of h, so this is less than so this one can prove. Okay. So remember classically, um, uh, ha, ha, no, square root epsilon uh, is the thing, sorry, 1 by 4. Hmm. There's a beating out here. Yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, So, uh, so if it was the, uh, so if it was the classical case, then uh, the probabilities would add up. So I, I would have got uh, 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 like uh, uh, I, I would have got the length square to be uh, l epsilon. Okay. So classically, this would have been just the length would have been l epsilon to the power half. Okay. So if uh, if it was the classical setup, so that is the uh, that is these spaces are like either have zero angle between them or 90 degree angle between them. Okay. But now these spaces actually have uh, uh, angle uh, like uh, whatever, N not very close to zero. I mean, the, the, this bound is out there. So then we can still rescue something, but things don't look so nice. So instead of L epsilon to the power half, I get L epsilon to the power one fourth. Okay. I get also this uh, delta out here. 
and uh, i mean you can uh, you can uh, believe that the more i tell things become more orthogonal so this upper bound only improves okay so, but anyway this delta is hanging out there maybe mod delta because i think delta could be minus one so mod delta of course okay so i get this but the important thing out here is that l is still multiplying epsilon okay so there, I mean, there are things that bite me slightly. Uh, like there is a delta here. There's one, uh, the fourth, uh, like fourth root instead of the square root. Okay, but uh, those are not so bad. Important is L multiplied epsilon. So I have at least uh, some handle now. Okay. So using this, let us uh, let us see what uh, we can do. Okay. Oh no, the, the, this is just a geometric lemma. So, I mean, the, uh, the way I'll think of it, H is an eigenvector of rho. I mean, and that satisfies, yeah. So, so suppose uh, there's a vector H which is nearly orthogonal to all these spaces. Okay, so, I mean, classically, it has low probability of those events. So, and if I take the union of them, it will still have low probability. That's the thing. And so now instead of union, take span, and uh, the projection of the span is still quite small. That's what I want to say. Okay. <clears throat> So, let's see. So, again, better idea. So, I will define pi tilde hat to be projector onto. So remember, I'm trying to uh, uh, come up with that pi tilde out there. So I will again define pi tilde hat to be the projector onto span of supports of What, whatever, I mean, maybe, right. just, uh, let me just say wj is defined to be the support of pi hat uh, 1j out here. So this is subspace of h. I'll apply this lemma out there. So I have, so uh, define pi tilde hat to be projector on to uh, w plus delta, yes. where the w's are, so now we instantiated the w, uh, w's, okay, j equal to 1 to f. Okay. So, yeah, so let's, uh, so let's see uh, now what we get, okay. We'll try to evaluate this. So again, this is one minus trace of pi tilde hat rho, and uh, pi tilde hat I know is this projector. So it's so it's essentially this is what I'm coming up. So this is greater than one minus l epsilon. Okay, by delta fix delta to be some small constant to one fourth. Ah, sorry. When I look at the probability, it will become half. Yeah. So, I've, uh, so I'll get an expression like this. Not bad. Okay. Now let me look at this. 
Ja. I have to take into account. Yeah, H is one eigenvector flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Let, uh, let me say that all the eigenvectors of rho are made up of vectors h which look like this. I mean, okay. So, of course, I mean, the that doesn't create a problem. I mean, most of the eigenvectors of rho will have to look like this. Otherwise, I mean, uh, I do know that uh, trace of uh, uh, like pi hat one one rho is small. This I know. So, uh, so this would mean that most of the eigenvectors of rho will have uh, uh, will have a small projection onto uh, pi one one hat. So, so they will look like this. So that, that, that you can take care of. Yeah. So, okay. I'm very precise, approximate. So this I can do. Okay. Now, <coughs> yeah. So this is what. We'll have to see. Now, so so support of so let's study support of pi tilde. So, uh, so, so by definition, support of pi tilde consists of those vectors which are orthogonal to uh, pi tilde hat. Okay, pi tilde hat is uh, span of uh, some spaces of this form. So, support of pi uh, a vector in support of pi tilde is uh, orthogonal uh, to all these spaces. So, in particular, this is uh, like orthogonal to T one delta one one hat okay. so by by this I mean the support of didn't want to overload the notation of these things okay so so let's look at what what t1 delta may be pi 1 1 hat so so let us say let some vector v belong to support of Pi one one hat. So now one minus delta square v plus delta t one v. Okay. So this belongs to t one delta pi one one hat. And uh, minus uh, delta v plus root of one minus delta square v. So this is orthogonal to okay. So just as an example, v is some arbitrary vector in the support of pi one one hat. So now remember, uh, we don't have pi one one hat out here. We have this til tilted version. So this is the vector that lies in the tilted version, okay? And here is something that is orthogonal to the tilted version, okay? Now, okay. So it's entirely possible. Okay. 
So what I know support of pi tilde is orthogonal to all these guys, okay? And I've come up with an example of something that's orthogonal to tilted version of pi 1 1 hat. So in the absence of further information, it's entirely possible that support of pi tilde contains a vector like this. Okay, this is bad. Why is this bad? See, what do I know? I know that trace of pi 1 1 uh, sigma 1 is very small. I mean, the regime in which you typically operate is, is exponentially small. Okay. So, but of course, if I take the entire space, I mean, if I look at uh, uh, instead of pi 1 1, if I look at pi 1 1 plus pi uh, uh, hat 1 1, of that thing will be 1. I mean, sigma, uh, of course, a density matrix. So, presumably, vectors in pi 1 1 hat have large overlap with sigma 1. Okay, this V is a vector in pi 1 1 hat. Even though it's getting multiplied by delta, what delta we are going to take? Just a small constant. Still, uh, okay, the, I can say that, uh, uh, what can I argue out here? It seems that the best that I can argue is that, uh, so the, like, so this is less than or equal to delta. So, so approximately less than or equal to delta. So seems the best we can say. Okay. Because it's entirely possible that the support of pi tilde contains a vector like this, and this v will be the killer. This v will have quite a large overlap with sigma 1. Fine, I, get, I multiply it by delta, but that's about what I get. It's not the exponentially small quantity that, uh, that I'm waiting for. So really, I cannot even have a ghost of this v, uh, v uh, coming into the correct definition of pi tilde. Okay? So now we have made some progress. We have uh, controlled this. But this has gone for a toss. So earlier we had controlled this, but then this had gone for a toss. So you see, you see it's like squeezing a balloon. You squeeze here, it comes out there. You have to squeeze from both directions and hope the balloon doesn't burst. Okay. So this is a better idea, but this is not the final idea. Any questions about this? Okay. Okay. So even better idea. For even better idea, uh, okay. So, so what do we do? So, so why did this idea fail? This idea failed because they were, uh, I mean, in the sub. I mean, in the support of sigma 1, I mean, sigma 1 uh, lies in the original Hilbert space H. And this V also lies in the original Hilbert space, and I mean, um, this V has a large overlap with sigma 1. That's what it feels. Suppose uh, we can do something. We can, suppose instead of sigma 1, we, uh, I mean, in fact, in, in, instead of the old sigma 1, we can tilt sigma 1 to, let's say, lie in, uh, lie in, um, uh, uh, whatever. L uh, suppose uh, suppose we can uh, tilt sigma one to uh, to uh, to uh, to, uh, to be orthogonal to this actually. Okay. So I'll tell you in a moment what I mean by thing. Sup uh, <coughs> so instead of uh, working with the original sigma one, so we'll even look at tilted versions of sigma one. And now the support of sigma 1 will not have vectors in the original number space, but they will be tilted. And, and maybe, I mean, this will, uh, this will be tilted in such a way that, I mean, amplitudes will, will cancel, something like this. Okay. So the, so the better idea is, like, consider, so this is the intuition, til, tilted sigma j also. So for that, we will need another geometric lemma, which is uh, something, I mean, which is almost something that you have seen in high school. So if you remember the parallelogram law of vectors, okay, so, right, this, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll uh, tell you what is this, so.
So, these are some vectors i ranges over some index set. So, length square of the <coughs> diagonal okay, okay, is uh, sum of the uh, length squares of the two sides, okay, length squares of the two diagonals. So, so that is the thing. So, that is a equality classically, I mean equality in plane geometry, it is an inequality if you go to operators, very easy to prove, just expand things out. Okay. So, this we will call the parallelogram inequality, inequality. No? Okay. So now what I'll do is, even before I start this uh, calculation and try to see what support of pi tilde is orthogonal to what and so on, I will tilt uh, sigma j in the following way. Okay. So, so now let me uh, wipe this out. I will consider first of all I will look at tilts of the entire uh, uh, Hilbert space, the original Hilbert space H only. Okay. So, because sigma lies somewhere uh, in H, I do not know. So, let me tilt all of H and see what I get T L delta. So, I can say that uh, sigma is less than or equal to twice sorry sigma j is less than or equal to twice So let me read it out for you, things may not be so clear. Okay. So we we'll look at tilted versions of H and we will uh, try to I mean tilt sigma as I said. Okay. So formally what I will do is I will apply this uh, tilting operator, but, but the result is essentially isometry except for the scaling in length. Okay. So it is as if I applied a, the uh, I mean it is as if I applied the uh, I mean the tilting isometry. Okay, except that I mean of course this drops in length slightly but okay. So this thing is close to the original sigma because delta is small. So that I have and this is uh, uh, this is tilting in the j direction but with opposite parameters. Okay, so the support of uh, uh, tilting by uh, negative of square root of 1 minus delta square I mean this support is orthogonal to this support. Okay, I mean what is this space is orthogonal to this space. And together, the span of these spaces contains the original H. Okay, I mean, if I took one tilted copy, that intersection with H is zero. But this is H. I tilt one tilted copy is like the other tilted copy is like this. Okay, together, they of course span H. So the this to get this formula, I'll use this parallelogram inequality. Okay, I'll apply it on the eigenvectors of uh, uh, sigma j, and I get this. This this is sigma j. Okay. So this I get. And now. I want to work with this henceforth, okay? Okay, and I mean because this is close out here. This thing is really wild because here the tilt is very large. I mean, tilt is close to one. Okay, so this goes somewhere else, and I I want to get rid of this as quickly as possible. I really uh, want to work with this henceforth. This is the tilted sigma j that will work. I mean, I'm, I want 
I mean, this is the idea that I'm trying to uh, fructify. So I want to work with this. So I want to get rid of this as quickly. So what do I do? So uh, I will define a subspace x, but to define it, I will actually define x perpendicular. x perpendicular is the span of the tilted versions of h, but this is the this is the uh, second one. I mean the extreme tilt. Okay, I take the span of all of these things. Okay, and uh, call that my x perpendicular. So x is whatever orthogonal to all this. So what I will first start off with is so so now uh, like we. Uh, we will start defining the real pi tilde step by step. Okay. So this is step one. Okay, not the final thing. Whatever projection onto x okay it's not quite there but this is the first thing so we want the projection onto x so why is it any good if now we look at trace of pi tilde sigma j okay so this is uh, yeah so i can apply that operator inequality it is uh, less than twice trace of pi x and uh, pi t j delta h sigma j pi t j delta h. This I get. There was the other term that I would get, but that other term is cancelled by pi x because of the construction. Okay, so I've got rid of the. Uh, second ugly term. This is slightly tilted sigma j that I'm working with. Okay, so this is what gives the factor of two there, and henceforth there will be no more factors. Okay, and uh, okay, so this is for sigma j. What can I say about trace of pi tilde rho? So this is j equal to one to l. It's good for all j's. So this. Okay. So this is uh, right. Trace of I mean pi tilde is pi x, right? Now it's one minus trace of I mean projecting on the orthogonal thing. But what is the orthogonal thing? It's a span of heavily tilted versions of H. Okay, rho is something that lies in H. This is heavily tilted, so the so the uh, I mean take any vector in H, take any eigenvector in the support of rho. Projection onto a single one of this is quite small, less than delta. Okay, and uh, okay, I take the span, but you know I mean they are all tilted in orthogonal directions, and here in fact you can explicitly compute what the even the span of this is, and you can compute what this is. So this is will be. I mean, uh, whatever, greater than one minus um, L epsilon, uh, whatever, like two L epsilon to one fourth or something like that. Oh, what, what, oh. One minus delta, if you want, something um, half, yeah. So something like this uh, we can get because and this, uh, now the separation between them are in fact really, really huge. So. So I get this. So very good. Something seems under control. This is under control, and this we are not quite there. Factor of two is there, but still, like uh, we have achieved the tilt on sigma j, and we have something out here. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So lemma. 
So now I have to study this uh, product of these two projections in little more detail. Okay, but remember this is a tilt. The very nice structure, very nice expression for the tilt. X is orthogonal to x perpendicular, but x perpendicular also has a has an explicit description. Okay, so what I'm saying is that uh, I mean I have pretty nice explicit description of projection onto x and th uh, this projection, so I can actually compute what this product looks like. Okay, so let take any vector in H, the original Hilbert space. Okay, I mean. Uh, I mean, the way you would want to apply it here is uh, take any vector h uh, in the support of sigma j. Okay. Okay. And then one can show projection of x, projection of p j delta h of little h. Okay. So this thing also looks like a tilted version of h, but now things are not so nice, and for that I have to make one more definition. This is. Okay, so I've introduced one more parameter, t uh, j delta delta prime. Okay, and um, so so maybe so maybe out here only. So so what is t j delta delta prime? I mean, what is this uh, uh, map? So this is uh, one minus delta square minus l minus one delta prime square. I'll just write it and explain what it means. Identity on H plus delta TJ plus summation uh, J prime, J prime not equal to J of T J prime. Uh, this will be de delta prime. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So recall what was the original tilt? That was TJ delta, and that will be in fact. Uh, Delta prime equal to zero. This was the original tilt which I had given, so that was defined to be one minus delta square. Okay. So one minus delta square is the original vector, and with coefficient delta, it uh, like I've tilted into the jth direction. So, so this was the original uh, definition of the tilt. Okay. So this is h. This is the jth orthogonal copy tilt like this. Okay. Just comes out here. But now uh, this uh, irritating delta prime comes. So now, I mean, uh, and why does this happen? Because you see, I mean, x is orthogonal to x perpendicular. X perpendicular has contributions from all the uh, j's uh, uh, coming in. Okay, so, so, the, so, so the other j primes like come in here as irritants for free. But uh, but still, things are not so bad. I mean, the because of this nice structure, the the other j primes, j prime not equal to j. They will come with some coefficients delta prime, which you can, I mean, compute, uh, which you uh, which you can compute out here. So, so I'll not bother to do it. The point is, delta prime is much much smaller than delta. Okay. So, uh, okay, I, sh I should probably call it delta hat. I mean, th this is not the same delta as this. Sorry. So this was the, I mean, this is the original definition. Okay. So what? So uh, I take. Uh, uh, so this is the pure tilt. I would like to say along the j direction with uh, strength delta. Okay. Then I project onto pi x. So now I get impure tilts. So, but still, most of the tilt, the, namely delta hat, is in the j direction. But there are uh, tilts in the other direction also. But there's nice structure. In the other directions, the tilts come with the same uh, ampli uh, strength, delta prime, and delta prime is much much smaller than delta, delta hat. So I get this. Okay. Now this. Now this is uh, still uh, pretty good news. Okay. So re remember that we had this earlier proposition that uh, if you had pure tilts along the orthogonal direction but delta, and uh, there was a vector. H that has small projection onto the subspaces W1 to WL. So I take the tilted versions, I take the span, it will still have small projection out there. Okay, now they are not pure tilts, they are impure tilts. Still something similar is true. S parameters don't look so nice, but so I will repeat. So 
so some subspace of the original Hilbert space and W plus uh, delta hat delta prime new definition is defined to be span j equal to 1 to L of tj delta hat delta prime of wj. Okay. So now projection of this things are even less nice. So earlier it was L epsilon, now it becomes L square epsilon. Okay, I, uh, uh, ideally I would have liked a half, but it's one fourth, but that was the case before and whatever. These two tilting parameters, something like that comes in. Okay, but still, as I said, like, I mean, things are under control. Remember, I mean, uh, I mean, the regime that I'm working is like L is some, I mean, L is uh, a constant, okay? I mean, L is not really a growing parameter. So this is something that I can tolerate. Okay, so using this, now I will define <coughs> y perpendicular. So I want to define a new space y. Okay, so y perpendicular is uh, the span so whatever, like uh, the same as before. So okay, I'll not call it. Over. Okay, so I'm saying that for our setting, take WJ to be the support of uh, pi 1 J hat as before. Okay, and now I have the tilted versions in this sense, and I have this definition. Okay, so I will define um, Y is defined to be the uh, whatever. Y perpendicular is defined to be just this W plus as defined out there. Okay, so I want to define a space Y, which is space. I mean, uh, I'll do it by defining uh, Y perpendicular. Y perpendicular is this span out here. Okay, so call this. So we will start defining the real thing step by step. So this was step one. Okay. Step two is pi tilde is Again, like trace of pi tilde sigma j. Okay, so I already uh, have this out here, and uh, like I'll get this, and I know exactly. Uh, I mean, I know exactly what this looks like. Okay, and uh, and uh, right. So so these are. Uh, Yeah, so what I would like to say is
sorry. I mean, uh, uh, the, there will be some scale factor because these are projections, but as I said, I mean, they're structured projections. So uh, it's essentially an isometry except for a change in length. So the length is only decreasing. So this inequality as written is still correct. So I will actually write Tj delta hat delta prime delta hat delta prime. So I'll write this. And uh, yeah. <coughs> and now, because of the structure of, uh, I mean, how how y perpendicular was defined, so this thing, like, so whatever, support y is uh, orthogonal. Uh, support y is orthogonal to this and now I mean remember sigma just still lies in the original space so now essentially to compute this uh, uh, so uh, when you compute this trace so this will be less I mean, than trace of so if you see geometrically I mean uh, what this vector is so I mean it's orthogonal to support of this. So you will have, uh, have to project it down to something orthogonal and then if you look at the inner product with something in the original Hilbert space, remember sigma j is still in the original Hilbert space. So the, the only thing that contributes are uh, vectors that lie in pi 1j. Okay? So this requires like some check. Okay? We get this. And this is the final thing that we want. Okay? Um, well, there's, there's actually one more, uh, yeah, yeah, one more step I have to do. So, so actually, well, so this is a remark. So step three is the final thing. So step three is Z is defined to be the core of pi 1 1, pi 1 2, pi 1 L. Okay. Oh, I think, can I take uh, three, five more minutes? Let's finish this. Okay. So, so remember I had these tests, okay, for all the sigmas. So the, all these tests do, uh, uh, do well on row, okay. So, I mean, I had this condition. There's a single row. All these tests do well on row. So what does this mean? This means, I mean, uh, remember these are projectors. So these are spaces. So these spaces have a lot of overlaps with each other. I mean, uh, 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 how can it be the case that projecting rho onto a subspace is nearly one? It means that uh, the, I mean, most of the eigenvectors of rho, I mean, uh, are almost there in the subspace. I mean, they have large projection out here. So you can identify those, uh, uh, those high strength eigenvectors of rho, and it will have large projection onto pi 1, 1. It will have large projection onto pi 1, 2, and so on. So you can make this idea systematically. So, uh, so by the core, what I uh, what I mean is, uh, for example, I can find a subspace of one of them. Let's say pi one one, okay. So uh, I can find a subspace of the support of pi one one, such that all the uh, vectors in the subspace have large projection onto the all these guys, okay. And furthermore, uh, whatever, whatever. I mean, these are the high strength eigenvectors. So this is still larger than. 1 minus something, and this is wh what actually loses the uh, thing out here. And like, I don't have time to explain how this comes, but this comes by considering uh, angles between subspaces. So uh, given any two subspaces, there's a notion of principal angles between them. And because the subspaces are close to each other, OK, 
Okay, at least in an intuitive sense because of this, you can quantify it by saying that most of those angles are pretty small. So you can identify, uh, uh, you, uh, I mean, you can identify uh, a, uh, a, a subspace of pi 1, 1 consisting of, I mean, the span of those vectors, I mean, which have a large projection onto pi 1, 2, and, and you can keep refining that and, okay, that makes the subspace smaller and smaller. That's why it's called the core. It doesn't get too small. You lose something out here, and this is uh, what you get. Okay. And the final pi tilde is defined to be okay. And now, actually, we we should do this trace pi tilde with sigma j. And uh, yeah, so the. Uh, so, uh, so the point being here is that, okay, so what is uh, this uh, Z, this core? So this core, okay, so, so I'll take this core to be like a, a subspace of pi 1, 1. So, so I have to look at uh, uh, what the vectors in this core project to. And the thing is that, I mean, they lie in pi 1, 1, okay, and they are orthogonal to, I mean, uh, 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 pi 1 1 hat after the tilt, pi 1 2 hat after the tilt and so on. So essentially, uh, so essentially what happens is that if I, uh, if I look at this core, okay, and, uh, uh, and project it down all the way to H, okay, so, uh, yeah, so uh, it will, so essentially, I mean, it will, uh, uh, if I project it down all the way to H, okay, it will fall in uh, pi 1j out here out here I mean, you have to you have to see how i mean how the how the vectors uh, go through but uh, uh, the, the the point is that you take any vector in the core and project it all the way through it will fall in uh, uh, pi 1j okay so the, so so finally this is what i get this is what i want and uh, trace of pi tilde rho okay that is still large, okay, and that is uh, and that is because I mean, uh, like, that's essentially from here, and we saw that uh, I mean this is like the gentle measurement lemma, like pi. Uh, we saw that rho has a large projection onto y, onto x, and now the core uh, lemma is a large projection of z, so it is a large projection onto the product. So this is nothing but gentle measurement lemma. So uh, we can get something. There. So this is the final construction of pi tilde for k equal to one. And for uh, arbitrary k, I'll take this pi tilde 1s, pi tilde 2s, and so, and tilt them by alpha. This will be pure tilts. Okay? And, uh, and the final pi tilde will be the span of this tilted versions of pi tilde 1s. Okay? With pure tilts. And uh, if I do that, then these are pure tilts by alpha. So that's what gives this alpha here. And there's this, this irritating square root out here. But... Uh, Still, I mean, I get this summation, which was, which was, remember, it was L times epsilon, and that was the important thing. So that, I mean, boils down like I'm just summing the probabilities here. Okay, so that's uh, like the final construction. Okay, so I, I guess the, the last part is a little vague uh, out here, but I don't have time, but whatever. You have to really, I mean, uh, go through how, uh, how the vectors project onto one subspace after the other, after defining them uh, correctly. Okay, any questions? I mean the quadratic nature. I mean, yeah. That I mean that doesn't play any role in this analysis out here. Uh, I mean, essentially, I mean we are just taking small tilts, and I mean it enters the parameters, of course, but uh, I mean they don't affect. Uh, I mean they don't affect morally what we are trying to say. Uh, what you are saying uh, has uh, more of an analog in the non-commutative non union bound discussed last time. That uh, I'm doing a sequence of projectors, so that's perturbing the state. And 
like I mean, as the, the Zeno effect would say that I mean, the state perturbs by square root of the probability. Okay, and that's indeed true. I mean, that's uh, that's the worst that can happen, and the worst happens. But if you uh, but if you look at uh, like if you apply chain these projectors and you see at the end what is the probability of success, that's essentially dictated by the sum of the probabilities. And I mean that's one way of explaining the quantum Zeno effect. Amazing uh, how much can be done with uh, I don't unless he's making it look simpler than what it is. Uh, using projections and just a typical linear algebra hammering it out that one can uh, really reach a far reaching conclusion. And I'm hoping that uh, see in this institute we want to really have quantum information as an interdisciplinary activity. Uh, between computer science, mathematics, and physics. Well, in 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 the in on paper it is so, but then in the in real life it's not happening. Maybe uh, because you have uh, exposure to all of these things, maybe you will be able to help us in uh, some somehow germinating this uh, thing in a very active manner. Uh, so I'm I'm not from the physics side, but yeah, the information theory is sort of new, but it's. It's amazing. I mean, the information theory so far we're looking at operator inequalities, matrix analysis, and commuting, non-commuting, and going down one path. And it's amazing, like what you can do by just I mean, understanding angles, vectors, and just elementary math. It's really it's amazing. More and I hope uh, he will uh, 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 help to uh, make it, make maybe this, this this is you know like a state for you know, state preparation at a large distance. <laughs> I hope they will really uh, facilitate uh, uh, our the, the three disciplines here getting uh, closer. Sure, yeah. So uh, with that, I think we should uh, uh, give Pranav the big applause he deserves. Well, I should also thank the participants. I mean. Uh, uh, yesterday, at uh, both at Pranav's uh, evening talk, uh, afternoon talk, and uh, the discussion, I counted there were 45 people. I think this is uh, this did ex for exceed uh, far beyond my expectation. I mean, you start with a school with 60 <laughs> on the first day, and you don't uh, find uh, 45 people in the penultimate talk. Of course, today some people have left. So I think this is, uh, 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 you have all been good participants, but uh, at the same time I want to uh, warn you that you should take it as the beginning and not end of something. I, I hope uh, whatever uh, this has tr triggered in you and the questions this, uh, this school has raised in your mind uh, uh, will act as the beginning of uh, some uh, uh, things so that will just keep you preoccupied for a long time to come. So uh, uh, I think I would like to uh, really thank uh, the school for giving me this opportunity to discover for now. Okay, yeah, so now it's time for... Uh,